All right, here we go on the streets of Mumbai. And we're going to do our arm wrestling. One, two, three. Rasmi, she's a good contender. She works out with me. Oh, no. Oh, what? Oh, my gosh. Hi, my name is Rasmi, India. Rasmi in India. You did a good job. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Organize. <laughs> it's a wonderful world. All right, there y'all go. Y'all can wave and say hi. Shahrukh Khan, both Kupsura Shahrukh Khan. Shahrukh Khan. Shahrukh Khan. Say what? Shahrukh Khan. Oh man, gosh. Shahrukh Khan. Shahrukh Khan. So y'all can wave. Everybody chilling. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say. Y'all been good. Once again, it's on. It's a wonderful world. All right. Bye. Namaste. Please show me something. Okay, show me. Oh, well, I'm about to practice my Hindi. All right, here we go. Mary Nam Ali Tan. Hey. And you? <laughs> Your name? Satchu. Satchu. Ashika. Ashika. Fire. Fire. Manisha. Manisha. <laughs> Who is you? And the baby? This is Manisha. See, we got it now. Up Kaseho. Or should I say, Hum Kaseho? Oh, we see, I'm learning. Thank you once again. No, this guy goes at the So, how you say hello? Who, what, where, what, why? All right, ready? It's wonderful to be here. And it's an honor not only being here in India, but also for the host. Ajana meeting me with Darshana to be at their humble abode to give this great message and teaching. And today we're going to talk about the Breatharian window of consumption. Now we're going to look at what got me onto the journey. Me being born and raised in America, I was eating the standard American diet of 50 meals a week. <laughs> right? Eating was equated with wealth. Yeah, I to hear, I think voice is not that audible. Is it better now? You hear 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 us better now? Yes. Better than earlier. Yeah. Okay. So eating was equated with wealth and also doing good. Not only that's the mindset in America, it's the mindset around the world. However, there's a price to pay for that mindset. Pretty soon my health began to get worse as I began to gain more weight. And of course, I didn't know nothing about energy cultivation, nothing about meditation. So my health got worse and worse. Blood pressure began to go up and other things were soon to follow. Oh, is this still not audible? Oh, they still cannot hear. Can you come closer to the mic or headphone if it is there? Oh, headphone? Have a headphone? Yes. Yeah. Okay, one sec, we'll get the headphone. Yogesh bhai, if you can mute all. Yeah, I think the, all phones are not mute. Everyone is requested to please 
mute themselves. I will do that. She seems to come closer to the phone. Just one sec, huh? Give us. We'll try the headphones. Okay, how do it sound now? Better? Now, how do it sound now? Is it better? Hello? Right. Yes. Better? No, stay here. It's not audible. We cannot okay. listen. All right, that's the end. Now? Now we got the headphones on. How did it sound? Oh, wonderful. All right. All right, here we go. Back in business. <laughs> so right there, that should tell us that food and health has something in common. If you abuse food, and we should know this by now, but we have to repeat it over and over again. Not only is going to make your health bad, it's also now associated with our mental thinking. And for those of us who are on the spiritual path, this really has great difficulties on what we call our spiritual growth. Because this is the main reason why I chose this path. And when we look at spirituality, if we use that word, each individual, it changes itself due to our life experiences and what we go through as we age. And that's okay, because this is your journey. But if you want to make your journey a lot more heightened, a lot better, to become one with the forces that can sustain you, this is why I'm introducing this message to the people so you can also experience the Breatharian journey also. Now, when we look at our window of consumption, we live in an age where there's many diet changes out there. You got your plant-based diets and your low-carb diets and low protein, we could go on and on. And many people got their beliefs and opinions. However, when you deal with science, which means knowledge, it don't care about beliefs or opinions. We need to get raw data to see what is the best diet for the human being. Now, the medical profession right now is at a standstill where they will say the best diet is a starvation diet. This is what they say. <laughs> yeah. Right. However, that's not even a diet. Even the nature, the animals in nature, when they, and, and when they get sick, they stop eating to heal. So we live in an age now, too, that we have the most medical benefits of fasting. And as I travel around the world dealing with the different people and their cultures, at the root of their cultures, no matter who it is, I can see the foundation of fasting in all of the major religions. And all of it is equating the joining with divinity. Now, when you deal with the Breatharian knowledge, this isn't new. It comes from an ancient word, anidia, which means to eat very little or none at all. And this is awesome. So as we go back into our windows of consumption in my journey, 
as I was feeling bad, the first phase that I took was I left alone the heavier foods and it was mostly me. I was a carnivore eater. <laughs> that was me. But when I left those heavier foods alone, it wasn't long for my body began to heal itself and feel a lot better. That's just my experience. Now there's times in the morning here in India, I go out to do my morning walk, my morning workout, and I see the same people out there every morning working out also. Now that's a good thing. At least they got that memo. However, the thing about it, as hard as they work out, there's no changes taking place because they haven't got the food part yet. <laughs> it's the food part that's going to make your workout, make your meditation, make your life, make your thought process a lot better when you start taking a deep look at it and master it to put it in its proper place. Food shouldn't run you. You have to build a discipline to be the master over the experience of food. Now, as we continue the food journey, my next phase was, as I seen the improvements happen on my body, I was seeking what is the best diet for the human being. So I ran into live and raw foods, eating more organic foods. I was taking a journey. That was my journey. And then I learned about fasting and exercising, adding all of these things in. Because all of this is the breatharian journey. The journey should lead you into a form of health. That's how you know you're taking the right path. Oh, man. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> like here in India, we use the word prana. It's not mythical. We just made it mythical. That was just the word they was using. We could say breath, life force, but it's an energy that should make you healthy. That's how we know you living on prana. And you'll start figuring out at your cardiovascular system, your heart start beating a lot better. Your blood flow start going a lot better. You start having more energy. You feel like it. That's the indication you got more prana. You see how we made that connection? Because the young generation, oh, what is prana? They just think it's some ancient Indian thing. No. It's the same word they're using today. Now, here we go. So as I went on my journey, checking these different diet changes, there was improvements on each little one as I lightened up more and more. But still my body was telling me, when you start listening to your body, hey, there's more, there's more we could go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now I want to bring up a thing called food allergies. Now there was a time I thought I can eat anything. You know how they say, give it to Mikey, he can eat anything. And there was a time I did just that. But of course I could say that's why my health got bad. Mm. And some people got food allergy to things that they can tell it right off. They throat swell up, they'll catch hives on the body. They have trouble breathing. Well, I got news for you. <laughs> As I stayed on this journey, food became an allergy to me. <laughs> right. I could feel the feet swell up, the body become inflamed. But that's when you get to a level where you got more prana flow into the body. Now let's go to meditation. And many people got different things on what they mean by meditation. You got the contemplation of the cooling down the mind. We understand that. But when I talk meditation, I'm talking about energy cultivation. 
we do have an energy flow, a circuitry going through our bodies. We got our neural system dealing with our central nervous system. It's hooked up to our endocrine system that works with chemicals. We're constantly making chemicals within our body. We are like a hormone factory of chemicals, constantly giving off. And it's affected by everything we put in our body. It's affected by our thoughts. And our bodies is already hardwired to the bigger picture of oneness. It is. Every time the sun come out, it activate our pineal gland. It didn't activate our, asked our permission. And you didn't have to do nothing special. The body knew to do it. At night, melatonin goes off in the pineal gland. Soon as the moon comes out, or even it's a moon, a night where there's no moon, the body's hardwired into the unity consciousness of the world you live in. So it's well enabled on sustaining you. But we have to get it there. Now, I get calls all the time saying, Ellie Tom, <laughs> what we got a digestive system for and all of this stuff? What we got teeth for? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's arguing that. Our bodies are animals. They're, they show up in nature. Our shoulder is hooked up just like a bat. Also, a dolphin. His shoulder is hooked up just like ours, so we can see it in nature. We are animals, mammals at that. But what makes us different, we got a few differences, but one is our brain. It's not the size of the brain because there's other animals that got bigger sized brains than we do. But we got more neurons or energy circuitry going in the frontal cortex of the brain. In other words, that gives us the ability to think at a whole nother level. Now, as we talk about this brain, in spirituality, we always like to talk about the mind, the thoughts, because we like to talk about these unseen things. But we ain't got to make it unseen no more. There's a neuroscientist who says something real good. He actually scans people's brains. And he said one day he scanned the brain of his mother. And she had a good brain, because he's seen a lot of brains that he scanned. When he scanned his own brain, this is what he said. I can do better. Okay. <laughs> That's what he said. Because your brain is showing how you're treating it. Why wouldn't it? Oh, man. Yeah, he can become your friend, your it, brain. It can become your friend. Wow. We don't even need to say the other part. Yeah. <laughs> we want our brains to be our friend. And it is the organ in the body that needs the most energy. Now, as I went on my journey, it took me a minute to figure this out. This is before I even became a breatharian. But I knew I was having health benefits on exercising, diet, giving myself time, meditation, meditation and, and having better quality thoughts. This was the foundation. This is before I even knew food freedom. Until one day, my ego was big. I seen all these changes I made on myself. And some woman mm -hmm. said to me, well, there's people who don't eat. And I said, what? <laughs> it hit me just like it hits everybody else. Mm -hmm. Wow. So back then, 20 years ago, because I've been on this path 20 years, I went seeking for that information. And back then, it wasn't that much information like it is today. Right now, we're spoiled. We're in the age of information. Even me, myself, I got like 500 videos out there, step by step, telling you what, what it is. It's not mythical. It's not spooky. It's our responsibility to take care of our energy field. We have an electromagnetic field that actually expands off of our body. And today, it could be measured because we got the equipment that can show it. It changes all the time, but it's our responsibility to take care of it. Now, another great piece of advice 
that you can use on this journey. I'm going to throw it in. Now, Oprah Winfrey said this in one of her interviews. She said not only she had to grab responsibility for her own energy, she understood that there was people around her in her life who was not responsible for theirs. They had no responsibility for their energies. Now, it ain't about her trying to change other people, but she had the power to protect her own. And, and if a person's not going to be responsible for their energy field, she don't have to let them interfere with hers. That was a great piece of advice to be successful in anything in life. And if you want to be successful as being a breatharian, that's what type of mind you have to take up. This is a successful journey. It's a success for you to live. A success for you to feel good. And you are just taking it more seriously than a person who does not have the knowledge. So it makes sense when you see food on a table and you know how something is going to make you feel after it's over. <laughs> Right. Now, of course, just like in anything, because you are a scientist of your body, it's not easy going from one habit to another. I'll be lying to you if I said I just one day magically stopped eating and that was it. There was many trials and errors in my 20 years being on this path. This is what makes me a good teacher. And I know it. The do's and the don'ts. There's a lot of things you can get caught up in and trapped in. Here come your mother talking about, you need to eat, you're going to eat with me, you don't love me. <laughs> Especially in India. Especially in India. Love is feeding food. Right. <laughs> your friends, you got to learn how to hang out again and be a new person. You are a whole new being again. Start new relationships. They're based off of food. We might as well admit it. I get many calls. My boyfriend left me. My girlfriend left me because you wanted to stop eating. <laughs> so there's a lot with the package of the 20 years. <clears throat> now let's get into age. Usually when I teach younger people, they get the breath area message differently to people that are older. Younger people still got a lot of experiences to go through. They're experimenting with life, especially in their 20s and stuff. They don't know what they want. So sometimes they say, I'm ready to become a breatharian. I had this retreat one time, and this poor guy is sitting with me. But all his friends is down there playing on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't long when he said, Ellie Tom, I'm ready to go out to the beach. Go with your friends. I'm up here in this cave living his life. See, he just read a book, and that's where he thought he wanted to be. But that's not where you wanted to be. You want to be down there with your friends right now, having your life experience. I'm in a cave because I've already been on a beach before. You understand? Now I'm having a cave experience. So age do mean something. My family already took care of it. My children is grown. Whole nother ball game. So me leaving food alone, I ain't got to get ready for the birthday parties. Here we go. So it does mean something on how you're going to use this knowledge when you grasp it. That's why we say it's to eat very little or not at all. Now, what do very little mean? I remember when I was growing up, there was a guy in our neighborhood and they said he only eat once a day. And we thought that was weird. What? He was a little man, too. But the thing about it, he outlived everybody. In that neighborhood. It makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> and now, the information we have now, you see older people more and more cutting back on eating. They ain't doing it like they used to, like their parents did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I better cut back. So the ball game is dealing with food, which is the greatest drug on the planet. Mm -hmm. Now, you got some people who got too much food, and you got some people who don't have enough. So grabbing this skill can help you through both scenarios. But before you can understand and wrap your head around it, first, this is a health message, a holistic health message. Now listen to that word holistic. Remember when I said your body's already hooked up to the matrix? 
When I was outside this morning near the Arabian Sea, I was getting nourished. That's what my, per that's what my perception is at. Now, there's a lot of people out there who enjoy it. They just say, this feels good. Of course it does. But if you're feeling good, they don't understand what is actually taking place with the body and the mind. Hmm. This is what the breatharian knowledge teaches you. As soon as you compromise the system, now listen at this. When you overeat, you're going to be hungry the next day. That's what happens. You're irritable. You want to stop it by blocking it up even more. You got a hole going straight through you, your digestive system, your mouth to your anus. And it regenerates itself the fastest because it get used the most. You got a new stomach every five days, a new intestine every six days. It has to regenerate fast to keep you alive. But when you start using it less, it got a time to heal itself. And you can stay healed. Now, I don't mean it'll stop regenerating, it'll keep flipping over, but you will keep going into health. That's why we got to look at now, how can a person be struggling with a chronic disease and never defeat it? Especially if the body has the power to change itself. Mm -hmm. Because that tells us right there, the lifestyle must change. In my travels, I have to tell you, I always meet somebody who had a chronic disease and defeated it. Not many, but I meet them. Yeah. And they will tell you it was a lifestyle change. They didn't say it was a magic pill. Mm -hmm. it did, they didn't say it was Dr. So-and-so. They made a lifestyle change. There was one woman in Israel who whooped cancer. Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. But every day, she's, as soon as the sun come up, she's there. Yes. She knows it's that healing power. You ain't got to tell her. That's why she came to my message. I know exactly what you're talking about. So these forces again. Now let's get into age again. An older person had a chance to see their body make changes. Nobody's arguing that. You keep eating like that, using the system, it's going to go through some changes. Nobody, that's what we're dealing with. So sometime when they get this message, it sounds inspiring. But there's another thing that they got to deal with. They got a lot of past things in their closet. Mm. Here we go. Which comes in the way. That comes in the way. Because <laughs> you've been through a lot more experiences. So it seems like it's going to be a lot of work to clean out that closet. And we know, even though it's easier said than done, will you remove some of those traumas, it'll bring more light into the body. But giving up those traumas, especially when you have age on you, you say, whoa, I can't do it. Now, let me tell you something. On my journey, there was many times I thought I lost. I can't get through this one. That's how I felt. And every time I got to the point of surrender that's what i had to break through yes that's all i could say that's important right i knew i lost many times with the avocados i had the avocado pills all over me i can't get out of this <laughs> true but that's why we talk about consistency mm. don't beat up on yourself because your body that's hooked up with the matrix, and we are dealing with an upper reality, that's a whole nother lesson. It's drawing us to it. All you gotta do is just stay in the driver's seat and allow it to purge you, and it's a self-sustaining frequency of life. Now, when you look at the modern day sciences, and you go into the different branches like, uh, let's say biology, physics, all of them got a diff different definition of what life is. Yes, no. And that's okay. But when you deal with the breatharian sciences, you're going to experience life. This is what we're talking about. See, every time you take a shower, for instance, or a bath, and you wipe off your skin, you can see the old 
skin cells coming off. But the new ones are right up underneath being remade. You remember I say you got a new stomach every five days? That's happening at different time periods with each organ in the body. You are going to start monitoring yourself and living it. And yes, food is so um, deep on how we eat it. Even when you eat certain foods, it changes the color of your skin, mm -hmm. changes the color of your eyes, how you feel. So now you got to start looking at it with another eye. Now, when you deal with meditation, let's go back to that. We got the seven chakras you hear about here in India. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if you go to a surgery table with a doctor, it ain't like they could cut up or in person to say, this is the chakra right here. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen. And that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is focal points in the body. Mm. Sort of like an expressway. Let's take the solar plexus. There's a gangly of nerves that comes there. Sort of like an expressway where all the cars meet before they go to the other destination. But when those wiring all come together, just like a wiring of a house, there's a concentration of energy there. When you focus the mind there, it kind of highlights itself and it kind of burns up everything around there because energy equals heat. Sort of like your car engine. When you fill it, you can tell somebody was just driving it. It needed the energy to go. You let your car warm up. And we're hot inside. See, this is where it gets good at. Now there's a, a, a science now called, and it's ancient, photon therapy. Photons means light. What they're saying is an organism produces its own light. You produce your own light. That's why you shine when certain equipment come to you. This is what you're working with, but you got to understand it. And the more you get your, how should I say, your energy level at a certain degree. we got to go there. Now, the percentage, I don't know yet. Everybody's guessing. Because keep in mind, this is new. Once it gets to a certain degree of how much light your body can hold, you don't need physical food. Mm -hmm. Because your organs don't care where it's getting the energy from. All it wants is the energy. You have to figure it out. You have to get out there consistently in nature, stretch that body, get that blood flowing, leave alone those heavier foods. Give your body time to heal itself over and over again. It'll keep regenerating until you get stronger energetically and then you can start leaving it alone. Longer and longer periods of time. You'll be walking around doing stuff that you ain't even eat or drink nothing, but you're having a, a regular day. Yes. Oh, man, this is good. We are energy beings. We are energy beings. There's not a physicist on this planet that wouldn't tell you that. You see energy, the sound of my voice is a frequency. You feel. We feel energy. So you have to start thinking in your perception on an energetic level. I had a friend one time that when I went to their house, I felt the energy come off of them. Mm -hmm. What you been doing? And all I heard was chanting going around the house in the background. How many, my number, number. That's all he was playing. They ain't even had to do nothing. Just from their playing it, it heightened up their energy in the body. I said, this is amazing. Now, Manoji, when we were just talking, and he picked it up. because He usually be teaching about the levels of consciousness and how intent is the highest. And he said, it kicked in. The energy is, everybody has access to the different energies. But when you have intent to know, mm -hmm. it makes a whole difference. So, yes, you can move energy around your body. Focus on different points. All this stuff. Start feeling how you feel. And you should log it down, too. I always tell people this now because we have a tendency to forget. That's why we got to have holidays to remember stuff. Seriously.
You overeat some cake and you feel feeling bad. I won't do this no more. I won't do it. And then the, the cake will show up again. <laughs> and you're ready to get into the same mess and you don't forget how you felt last time. But if you at least throw it down, <laughs> you can ask yourself, is it worth it? Right. Now, I admit, now let's, this is why we're going to bring it down to earth. I love to have a so much that there was times that I said, well, I guess it's worth it for me to feel like that again. Right. <laughs> you know how you're going to feel until you get tired of it. You know how they say you can't change a, a drug addict or an alcoholic until they're ready? Mm -hmm. It's the same with the food. Right. So that's why you don't need to break, beat up on yourself. However, start looking at it differently and at least find where your boundaries is at on what you would deal with until you get stronger and start lightening up more and more. We're making this so down to earth and practical, you should transform yourself. Now listen, we as humans are good at transformation. We are, we know what it is. Just over, just now, Darshan, <laughs> over at her house, she answered the door, she had on one outfit, and then she made this transformation and came back with this other outfit on, and I didn't even know who it was. He was wondering, who is this new woman? <laughs> We're good at transformations. They just come at different levels and degrees. Look at some of your bodybuilders on the planet, your men and women. That is amazing. Somebody will do that to themselves. Or even the people who's overweight, the way like, 500 pounds, or, you know, over 200 kilos and 300 kilos. That is amazing. I don't care how you look at it. And they're still walking around. We could transform ourselves all the time when you put your mind to it. That's why the breath theory and knowledge is just another state of consciousness. It's another state of consciousness. So now I'm at the point, and I try to be user-friendly with people. I don't tell people what to eat or what they shouldn't eat. You understand? But one day I was over at a friend's house and she had some watermelon there. Would you like some watermelon? And I said, as I looked at the watermelon, that'd be too heavy. Right, that's where I'm at now. Now there was a time I had a summertime where we ate watermelon and different fruits all summer. I remember that experience. That's what it was. And I remember how we got along with the sun, but to have that experience now, I don't want to repeat it. Been there, done that. See, there's a thing where Shiva, I like telling this one, he outgrew hunger. And when he outgrew hunger, that brought forth peace. However, Shakti said, well, that's you. You outgrew hunger, but what about me? So, of course, what makes this a journey and what makes it difficult is the people we have to deal with and how we're going to fit in. That's what it boils down to. This knowledge isn't for the guru that's up in the cave no more, away from society. We're talking about the unity frequency now on how you can carry yourself amongst the people. You know how the scriptures say, and God walked amongst the people. This is what we're talking about. A high frequency vibration right. amongst the people. We're all different frequencies of vibrations, but now we're getting some who's going to another level, who's not running away from humanity, who's living amongst us. Oh man, this is good, isn't it? You can ask questions, of course. Now, any questions? Jagruti? Uh, any questions or uh, you want him to explain anything? Ah, now this is how we deal with it. I've been on the path for 20 years. And a food part to leave it alone, that happened many times, but 
This last time happened two years ago. Now, why would I pick that time period? Remember when I said, when well, you got different relationships? So I was raising a family and there was a time I ate every other weekend with my son. So once my son got to take care of himself and I could break away and continue my journey, that's when I decided to take my spiritual walk or my energetic walk to another level of the no water and then the challenging of no food. Well, the no food and no water. Now let's go back to the water. The water, most breath theories and most people don't even drink water no way. We're going we're gonna to talk about that right now. <laughs> Water is simple. Now what happens is, there's a lot of breatharians you'll probably see, they'll get a cappuccino, they'll get a Coca-Cola or something like that, and that'll blow somebody's mind. Why is they doing that? Now there's an old concept, once you get this skill, there's an old concept that a yogi could drink poison and it won't affect them. That's how they're looking at it. Even water ain't sustaining you and not even a food that how people say, give me some orange juice. It don't matter no more. There's a liquid journey that people go through where they get a lot of the vitamins and the minerals. Now for myself, water is in the atmosphere that we live in. The reason why you get thirsty is due to the mucus that's in the body. That's that coating when you wake up in the morning and you go, spitting it out, and everybody goes through that because we got a hole going straight through our body. Your body creates the mucus on everything you eat. When you eat, you should drink water. When you stop eating, you don't need to drink water because you won't get thirsty. Now let's make it make sense. Let's take yoga, for instance, the Kriya Yoga. There's seven different levels. About at the third level, that's actually where food freedom is at, where hunger and thirst will decrease. The reason being is the pr practitioner to get to the third level in yoga should be healthy enough to where there shouldn't be that much mucus in your system so you can feel thirsty. Thirst is just a, how should we say, the cells in the body is giving you that so they can clean themselves out because they ultimately feed off of ATP, which is a high frequency energy in the atmosphere. Now the fluids and the liquids in your body, your body creates everything. We talked about the endocrine system. Your blood is made from the bone marrow. Your central nervous system, where you got the cerebral spinal fluid going up and down the spine, your body creates that from the atmosphere. And I tell people to do this test all the time by filling the atmosphere. Mm. There's moisture in it. I don't care if the day is hot. I don't care if we're in the desert. Even where you're sitting at now, there's moisture in the atmosphere. The average person is not sensitive to it. But when you get on this journey and start lightening up, your body will get just what it needs at the right quantity. This is awesome. Hmm. So dealing on a water journey, that was easy for me. That's been out the picture. But I did go through the liquid journey of having my favorite drink. There was times you'll go to a cafe, you'll be with some friends, and you'll say, give me a tea. See, as you start coming into this journey, you don't want to exclude yourself and put yourself in a box where you can't socialize with people. And that's what hurt a lot of people too, until you get stronger on those levels. So you start still going out with friends, doing this. And then when you get to a level where you can carry yourself without having nothing. I got friends now that don't even know I'm breath in and will be hanging out until somebody bring it up and they'll look at me and say, I didn't see you get nothing. You didn't have to say it. The energy is there. You understand? So it's all about how you socialize your relationships when you're ready. And me, I had to grow into it. See, it isn't hard to get the body into that state. The hard part is the habits on how we want to be accepted, who we hanging around, our relationships, and the life you're creating for yourself. That's what it all boils down to. Wow. <laughs> now, this gets 
Oh, this is awesome. I love talking about it. This is all I do. <laughs> this is giving me energy just from talking about it. See, it's all about energy again. I remember one time when I started fasting every other, well, every weekend, have it out of my lifestyle. And I tell people at least fast master one day before you can do more. And I remember one time me and a friend got caught up in conversations we really enjoyed. And we forgot when the time was over to go eat. So that right there made me realize that this journey, when it frees you up from food, because we spend a lot of time chasing food, it costs a lot of money, costs a lot of time to prepare it, even ordering it, all this other stuff. Then it makes you sleepy. You got to use the bathroom. You're making this whole cycle. It's going down on your health, all this stuff. When you start freeing up for that, you got a lot of time on your hands. So then this gives you a time to start pursuing things and doing things you really want to enjoy. And that's the frequency you start staying in. Now, going back to that saving money, I was just looking at a thing today, and I should know it because I'm from America, but it costs at least $200 a, a, what, a month just to feed a person. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Not just being average on simple stuff. You understand? So the average person is actually, this will put you in bondage because you're basically working just to eat. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. That's a slavery. So when you free yourself up from this, now you at least could do things and pursue things in life you really want to do. Oh, man. <laughs> so not only... Oh, how you handle hunger. All right, this is a good one. All right, this is a good one. How you handle hunger. Now, first of all, we got to define what hunger is. And most people that's in the fasting will say about the third or fourth day of taking a fast, their hunger decreases and their thirst decreases. But hunger is created when the mind is, the, the brain is telling you it's not getting enough energy. If the brain is not getting enough energy, it's going to give you an indication that you feel hungry. And if there's not enough nutrients in the blood, because our blood is circling all the way around the body, going through the heart, getting the oxygen to the lungs, nourishing the brain. If it don't give that nourishment to the brain it needs, the person will feel hungry because the body did that for survival because the brain wants its energy. So it's going to force the person to go eat. Now we got that. So hunger does exist. Mm -hmm. I won't sit up here and tell you it don't. That's why when you get on this health, holistic health message, you are grabbing energy from other sources to nourish the blood so it can nourish the brain. If the brain got its nourishment and its, oh, if the brain is happy, the rest of the body is happy. That's why in ancient times they gave us those similitudes where they'll show a staff with the serpents going up it. Mm -hmm. Heat love to rise upwards. It's all about the brain, brain health. You got to properly nourish your brain. If the brain get its nourishment, especially through meditation, this is why we talk about energy cultivation, you won't suffer through hunger. That's how you overcome hunger. Oh, man. See, let's look at the blood again. Uh, let's take a look at the blood. They say the life is in the blood. Now, the blood will change its color, its thickness, and all this stuff due to a person's diet. That's why you can take a blood test and they can tell you all about you, what you ate and everything else. 
So we want to start what? Nourishing the blood at a higher degree. That's why we got this thing in India called pranayama. Breath exercises. Now there's one thing you could just go through the motions or you could really know what that's for. You're opening up what? They call them the nadis, energy channels in the body. You're oxygenating your blood. You're breaking up energy blockages. And it's all going to eventually go to the brain. You're nourishing it. When you really start understanding what this is for, and especially you got to add other things in your overall lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Hunger won't even be on the thing no more. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people when they eat, it ain't even got nothing to do with hunger. They eat out of emotions and boredom. And habit. And a habit. Sort of like the Pavlov effect. You eat every day at noon. When noon come around, you're, you're going to start saliva in front of the mouth. Right off the rip. Yeah. I got to go eat now because we're creatures of habits. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to recreate a new habit. Sort of like when I was fasting once a week on my journey. The first time I fasted, it was something. I couldn't wait till it was over. <laughs> I was waiting outside the restaurant. <laughs> To eat your favorite. <laughs> to eat my favorite dish. And then I figured it out. Before I went on my 24-hour fast, I went to my favorite restaurant to eat my favorite dish. And then I was waiting after the fast at the restaurant. <laughs> but at least I did my 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so we're challenging ourselves with these new habits. That's all they are. Yeah. We're creatures of habits. But... When we develop these new good qualities again, these new habits, it will benefit you in the future. So right now, yes, hunger is a true thing when a person don't know what it is. But this brain, it needs to be paid off. It needs, and this payment is energy. Yeah. The brain's payment is energy and it don't care how it gets it. Because once the brain got his, like we said, it controls the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the other endocrine system, and it'll get us signals on what needs what once everything is clear. So that blood, the life is in the blood, and we got to take care of the maintenance of the brain. That's what it's all about. If you can get those two things together, you're rolling. Yeah. You're self-sustaining. You're the master. The tree of life. That's it. <laughs> Oh man, this is good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't do. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, wow. Swagat hey, I practice it by Hindi. <laughs> what did he say? Swagat hai? Swagat hai. Yeah. <laughs> he is learning Hindi. <laughs> and, and this is what it's all about, right?
<laughs> ah, that's a good question. How do we start on this journey life? Mm. Well, for number one, you just started just by listening to this message. Because <laughs> it's like a jack-in-the-box. You can't put it down. In the age we're in now, you're going to hear it more and more. So the main thing to start on this journey is, since we're looking at it through a perception of a health thing now, that's how we're looking at it. So usually they say the first initiation is diet and exercise. Those are the first initiations. And then as you keep on building yourself, of course, we being the people, who get your favorite meditation. See, if you got a favorite meditation, you'll stick with it a lot longer instead of trying to recreate one. So diet, exercise, get your favorite meditation, and then see where you're at on taking a day at least once a week where you can have a prana day for yourself, where you don't eat nothing at all. Now, depending on what level you're at, you don't need to do no food and water if that's not where you're at yet, you know, for the 24 hours. You could do a juice day. Fruit. You can have a fruit day. You understand. It's all about being easy on yourself because our bodies are like rubber bands. You know, humanity just stretched it a certain way, you know, with our belief systems. But as soon as you let the rubber band go, you'd be surprised how quick it'll snap back in shape. So that's the thing about it. So that right there, diet, exercise, your meditation and fasting is a good foundation to start with and stay consistent with it to get that new habit within the body. And of course you got this information now, that right there, telling yourself you are what? A pranic being, uh, a breatharian. You could be self-sustained, right? You know this now putting that new program into the body, right? And there's a, there was a book a woman wrote in the 70s, matter of fact, it was talking about watch what you think, your body's listening. So here we go, these affirmations on what we think about ourselves, knowing our potential, because we all got that other voice inside of us that like talking negativity, everybody has it. It'll say, oh, we're gonna starve today. We're <laughs> You know, stuff like this. I want to knock you out of your game. Yeah, that's negative. Right. So we just have to stand up to that voice inside till you prove that voice that we'll be okay. Mm. This is what we're doing now. Let that lower voice lower itself so our new voice could take over this vessel. And spend time with such people. Right. That's very important. Oh, absolutely. Oh, likewise. Oh, see, that's another level and degree of fasting. Like we said, we at least want to get people to wear on what they can handle. So if you do want to do that one where you have a day not even talking, but going more inside, mm -hmm. beautiful. that is beautiful. That is awesome. If that's the level you want to uh, experience, that would be good. Because you save energy. You'll save energy. It, it takes... A, it, it takes a lot of energy to talk. <laughs> oh, yes. Does silence give more strength? Oh, absolutely. Because... 
Because we're using uh, energy for everything, even for me sitting there talking. And I remember uh, the first time I came to India, because what this was like three years ago, India gave me a big workout. I was talking morning, noon, and night. They was like, well, he ain't drinking water. Now, that was my first time pushing myself to those levels, but they broke me in. So I love to talk. <laughs> but that was training. Yeah. But when you're starting out, yes, you want to conserve those energies before you start using them. Oh, this is good. Oh, here you come again. Say hi to the camera. You still running around fighting people? Oh, come on. Don't you be like your friend again. Look at him chilling. And you want to run around here and bite and fight and all this old stuff. All right, just chill out.